Hi everyone, I am Geraldine Moringo. I am the Senior Product Owner at Nationwide Building Society. And um, this is Richard James, who's the Head of Digital Technology and Engineering. Um, today I wanted to give you a message in a bottle from an island, which is where I currently work. Um, I, when I say I'm on an island, I am on an island as in um, I work in an agile team, which is based at Junction 16 off the M4. I'd like to say it's the Seychelles, but it's not. Um, uh, um, that Junction 16 is one junction away from head office, we'll refer to as Main Island. And um, on my little island, um, I have a team of anywhere between three and five scrum teams operating at any one time. Front end, back end developers, um, pure scrum, um, experienced designers, and we are working to one goal and one mission. Um, we have a very clear vision as to what we're going to do. And what we're doing is rebuilding current account opening. Now, again, this is another island in Seychelles. My husband's from there. We go there a lot. I like it. But on this island, it's called Ladigue. And on Ladigue in Seychelles, um, you arrive and there are no cars. No cars are allowed on the island. Everyone arrives. You can only get there by boat. There are no air, there's no airport. There's only 3,000 people on the island. And when you arrive off the boat, you um, are greeted by the bikes, and every bike has a different size, a different shape, a way to adjust. But they expect any tourist to ar that arrives at the island to adjust to their local ways of working. Um, in adjusting to local ways of working, some people might consider that to be a bit backwards. How can you, in 2019, not have any cars on this island? But it works for them, and we have our own way of working on our island. So when people arrive, they are greeted with walls of whiteboards. They are greeted with walls covered in post-it notes, and it works for us because we're about communications, dialogue, and upfront team debate. On our island, we're different to the mainland because we um, have revolutionary things like kettles. We are trusted to make our own tea. Um, I don't know how we got that through health and safety, but the risk has been accepted. We are allowed to venture off our island. We walk across the road and we buy our own lunch. We don't have an in-house restaurant. We um, dress casually. We play our own music. We um, have fun. We work hard. We play hard. And it's a vibrant place to be. And in doing so, we've adjusted in a way that works for us. There's 60 of us, but we are together. And by working in this way and being at the forefront of setting a new direction for the way in which Nationwide as a building society delivers change, there is an outcome of that, which is we've effectively out started acting like a tribe. Tribal behaviours are starting, starting to come through, and it is starting to feel like us against the world. I feel like a really strong and empowered leader. When I stand in front of our, us, our team, they are all listening to what I have to say. In that moment, I am there to inspire them and help them feel confident about where they're going, what direction we're going in, and as a team, we're very confident that we're going to achieve it. We will overcome any challenge put in front of us. We feel powerful, we are strong, and anyone who comes in our way to stop us, we will overcome. And nine times out of 10, those people are from head office. No offense. We are able to face up to any challenge. We take our time, we work through conversations and challenges together. We have frank and open debates, and we disagree. And um, I'd love to say, uh, my, my, the bizarre side of me, you know, talk, I feel retros are my favorite part of the week, because you never know what's going to kick off. But we do so in a really comfortable environment, and that strength helps me to feel like a really strong, energized leader. I feel motivated when I come to work every day, and I just can't wait to be there and see what will arise at that moment. However, when I do go over to the main island, that power and that feeling of strength starts to diminish. My team is not behind me or by my side. I become, rather than a big fish in a small pond, I am vulnerable. Not everyone in the main office believes in my mission. Not everyone in the main office believes in the strength of my team. And actually, there are some people that actually want to see us fail because we, we are just an experiment. And so, if I'm honest, I can't wait to get back. And sometimes, if I'm honest, I avoid going to the mainland. Um, 
every which way possible. But in, do, in becoming a tribe, we also have freedom in our environment. So um, I have to say I've worked nationwide for 13 years. And for two and a half years, I've been in my tribe. Um, and in the last two and a half years, I have um, revealed myself because I've been a fake for the last, for the 12, 11 years before I joined this tribe. Because any time there was an opportunity to share a car with anybody that I worked with, I made a conscious decision to play Radio 1. I don't listen to Radio 1, no offence to anyone that does, but it's not my musical genre of taste, but I felt that I had to fit in. For the last two and a half years, I have now rediscovered myself because my tribe makes me feel so confident and so safe, anything is possible. At our last program increment event, for two days, I played Bob Marley solid. I liked it, we all felt chilled, we all enjoyed it, and we, we got out of those two days a really high energy, a really good vibe, and we achieved a really good outcome. When we go live with a release, we play soca. For anyone who doesn't know, that's the music they play at Notting Hill Carnival. We conga around the office. And last week, I, am, I had them doing Mexican waves to a song called Follow the Leader. For Diwali, we all wear saris. We wear cultural dress. We have pizzas on a Friday. We have samosas on a Tuesday. We dance to Bangra at Christmas, and we are was one. There is no dif difference. There is no divide. We are one strong and powerful team. But that fun and that vibrancy can often be perceived as actually just messing about. You're the guys at Junction 16 who just mess about. We're not. We're the guys who work hard and we're the guys who play hard. However, there's always that feeling of psychological um, unsafety, lack of safety. Because whilst we've got power and whilst we've got that feeling, our reputation is growing. We are delivering. We're releasing at least twice a sprint. We are making noises and people are starting to see us for the quality that we're delivering. And as such, more and more people want to see what's going on down there. I'm going to have a look. We are in a goldfish bowl. I am forever being followed by people that just want to see what we're up to, not that they're just in awe of me. Um, I am forever, people are forever wanting to see what we're doing. And part, there are people that want to see us fail. I'm forever faced face with people calling us the fragile team. Um, I am forever faced with people that actually don't believe in what we're doing and they still see it as an experiment. Um, I am still faced with the challenges um, when I go back to the mainland, which is, do you still work here? We thought you'd, thought you'd been fired. Haven't seen you around. Have you not been demoted? Um, Geraldine, I'll be honest with you, if this fails, you have no job to come back to. And that cycle of uncertainty, whilst I'm committing to be a pioneer and I'm committing to deliver the best for the organisation, it niggles at the back of your mind because actually you're the one that's taken a leap of faith. You're the one that wants to drive better outcomes for the company and actually for anyone who's experiencing what you're building. And in doing so, I've created a new diversity of thought. I am a female. That, historically, has always been a subject of debate and difference. I am and happen to be a female of colour. I tick every diversity box you want, but my new, my new nature of diversity is I have diversity of thought. I now don't get riled by my normal areas of diversity and where I want to see change. Actually, when I hear people spending two weeks working on a slide deck, it infuriates me. I um, had a moment only a week ago where I went back to the main island and they were all sat in suits. That pushed my buttons because actually, you know, we've been told we can be smart casual. Why is no one not embracing that? Why is no one actually recognising that we can be more stronger together and actually let's just be who we are? That diversity of thought means that I am now feeling more empowered to have upfront conversations, to drive through change. I am on a mission to deliver value as soon as possible. I am on a mission to deliver the right outcomes for our members and making every decision with a technology view by my side. That is not the person I was two and a half years ago and that's what I'm living and breathing today. And I refuse 
to move back from my new, newfound level of authenticity. I will not be found in a suit. And if I am invited to a head office meeting, I might wear black trousers, but I will rock them with bright yellow shoes. My environment has created the product that I am today. And my environment is the place where I feel safe. And I will not compromise on that. And any time I go away from my environment, I am very comfortable to go back to what I call my island because my island feels like home. And that's where we can achieve positive outcomes. I'll now pass you over to Richard. So, um, firstly, thank you. So the the chance to come and talk in front of people about how you're feeling, that chance to reflect on the journey you're on, the chance to actually share that things aren't always awesome, that there are wins and there are actually great periods of sort of uncertainty and lack of safety. This whole gig, this, this entire meetup scene, this entire conference scene matters to folk like Geraldine, folk like myself, because it affords us the chance to come and share and feel safe. And let's just spend a few minutes talking about safety. And we'll talk about safety on both sides as well. So Simon Wardley, superhero, um, genuine, hilarious man, cats, etc. cetera. Um, we'll touch on him quite a few times. But the key thing that I have flagrantly stolen before from him is the concept of pioneer settlers and town planners. And it's brilliant to hear from Nationwide's pioneers. It's brilliant to hear from that group of folk who are prepared to challenge the status quo, who are prepared to actually, on nothing more in, than a belief in better ways of working, take an opportunity to do something outside of the normal. And actually, at the same time, for those folk who went out and did something pioneering, we've got to be equally respectful of those folk left behind, those folk who are the settlers and town planners who feel just as threatened, differently, but just as threatened. And you have this real mixed agenda now where the pioneers who are going out and charting these brave new ter territories, the chance to go and look for new areas of exploration, the chance to go and find new things, are only ever as powerful as those folk who can turn it into a product or a proposition that can be delivered to a customer. And only ever as powerful if you work in an enterprise as the group will come along and industrialize and scale. And yet actually the thing we're struggling with is inclusivity and diversity of thought. That sense that for Geraldine, the, the most telling thing she says is that it's no longer about any other form of diversity than inclusivity of diversity of thought. And it's that sense that people cannot be respected for the difference they bring that is less visible but deeply impactful to all sides. So if we go into some of this language, tribes, tribalism, the whole shenanigans about are you following this, that or the other model, these words all mean things. The words themselves then have overloaded history. Tribalism is not always a positive. If you're the guys on Lord of the Flies Island, it certainly didn't work well for Piggy being tribal. The, the whole language set for the organization also comes heavily overloaded with history. Anything that can be capitalized has this sense of almost then picking a side. So if you pick capital A Agile, is that a product versus project? If you pick DevOps, was that some sense that there was previously no ability for developers and operations to share? Is this some sort of sense of difference that tribalism seems to engender? And actually what it leads to then is, is almost more of a sense of distress and visible difference, which makes it really unsafe. Again, back to the sense of safety. <laughs> uh, most recently, Granit Xhaka, um, he definitely didn't feel safe. Um, so Granit Xhaka, Arsenal captain, uh, subbed recently, um, home team, playing in front of his home team. And when he was subbed, his home team fans didn't just boo him, they gave him like proper vitriol, proper enmity. And he left, uh, he left not just the pitch, he left his shirt on the pitch. He gave back a stream of, let's say, invective to the audience, to his home team. And he's not played since, let alone captained the side since. How does that feel? How does that, that's, again, that sense of home team not supporting? How do you bring your best self to work? How do you perform? How do you give of yourself if you're not safe? What does safe look like? What does leadership look like? I guess. One of the things I'm seeing at the moment is I don't see a lot of positive role models. What I struggle with today is that we're all, from a sort of senior leadership perspective, all on a journey of re-understanding what it means to be servant leaders rather than directive hierarchical leaders. And I find that 
in me included, that, that sense of a real struggle is to what do you bring to work nowadays? How do you support? How do you show up? It's a tough journey. And actually, my favorite, my favorite character is probably Dora. One, because she turns up with a Wardley map. Two, because she's always positive. Three, because there isn't a challenge that she won't face into and try and resolve. She knows languages, she's a trainer, she's a teacher, she's empathetic. And it's that sort of creativity and open-mindedness that exemplifies now strong leadership. And for my kids, Dora is their strongest hero or heroine, and it's that type of person that I would love to be when I grow up. Uh, folk who you do or don't want to be when you grow up. This guy, the whole tenet around unlearning, he's got like a real risk of Yoda-esque language. So Empire Strikes Back, you must unlearn what you have learned. A whole bunch of the industry viewpoint about learning and unlearning, becoming a learning culture by unlearning, kind of smacks every now and again a little bit of, mm, it's like, man, it's not super helpful to wander around the place looking like you're small and green. Um, albeit, genuinely, we turned up in team outfits today. Look, nationwide is blue, and both of us turned up in green, black, and brown. It's not like they're even known color schemes. Um, anyway, so this guy, in that sense that, how do you do it? How, how do you unlearn? If you've been doing something a certain way for a certain number of years, and you've become senior, successful, respected, and drive your own self-worth through a certain way of working, what is the thing that allows you to unlearn? It's certainly not someone telling, telling you, turning up and telling you you must unlearn what you have learned. That, and like it, he struggled in the film since then. I think Luke's dead now. That said, um, how do you learn? You learn by this, uh, and not, not by me ranting at you. you. You learn by coming to these things and listening, by sharing, by hearing how folk are, how, how folk are on the journey. How are they um, getting along? What are the things that they've solved? What are the things that we've all collectively not solved? And the ones that we've collectively not solved, are they unsolvable or is it just that it's a complex rather than a complicated situation and we can continue to experiment? The sharing, the sense that you are not alone, the sense that you can come to an event like this and genuinely feel more confident talking to you as a group of people I've never barely met than have the same conversation in my own organization. That's what this is about. This, this entire environment, I can go back to my own organization and I feel far less comfortable talking as I do here this environment, this group of people, these conferences, these meetups, the types of things that Barry and team put on are incredibly powerful because they give you a chance, they give you a sense of safety to talk, they give you a sense of safety to share, and they are the environments in which we can all learn. But learning about what? Uh, obligatory Christmas jumper, it's that time of year, nearly. We've done fireworks, it's definitely this time of year. This sort of mythical North Star, and it's a mythical North Star that isn't a destination. So previous, the, the guys from OVO, this idea that it's not a destination, this is the journey. It's also a sense of, can you enjoy the journey? Can you enjoy the context of continuous learning? Can you enjoy continuous improvement, not just for what's been achieved, but particularly for how it's being achieved and how folk are learning and growing on the journey? What I tend to see is that, are we nearly yet, there yet mentality? I have an entire plethora of the organization dedicated to something that has an end date that has a particular mission, and when the mission is achieved, you're done here. And actually, it's really hard to get folk to believe in the sense that actually the journey is, is more powerful, more poignant, more positive, and more beneficial than any destination. What do we know about scaling? Uh, John is around. What do we know about scaling? We know that for those folk who are seeking a single answer, there is always some single answer that apparently for every one of us, in every context, in every industry, in every geography, at any point in our maturity, there is a framework or a model that can solve everything. Like, again, it's like genuinely bonkers thinking that there must be one way of solving this. There is no, John will tell you, no one best way. And equally, those who try and sell you the one best way, they're, they're shortchanging you. And you feel it in all the conversations. You feel it in all of the debates about standardization. You feel it in all of the sense that you can't achieve um, difference and respect for difference. That said, actually, if there isn't one best, simple, consumable way, it's a really rich diet. Poor old Mr. Creosote here didn't know when he should work on his next course or not. It's just so much content. And if each conference you go to or if each thing you read on LinkedIn or other forms of social media, you can look at and you go, do you know what? I want to try this somewhere. And if you're in charge of 
trying to help an organization change ways of working, what's the balance between invite and inflict? Because if you might find something interesting and then turn up and poor old Mr. Creosote's just waiting for the next wafer of thin mint of business agility, we know how that story ended up as well. Be mindful of pace. Be mindful of letting things settle. Be mindful of people's digestive system. Be careful. And then finally, if I go back to where Geraldine was on the island, I think there's this real risk of industrialization crushing islands. This idea that actually unbidden, without that sense of inclusivity, respect, and diversity, we'll end up in a space where we think that there is one answer, where one answer is heavy industrialization, heavy process, heavy technology, heavy tooling. And we forget about people and culture. And we forget about respect for individual islands and what they can bring. The thing I love about this is that on this picture alone, what you see is that there are groups who are pioneering. There are groups who are actually out there saying, well, we've got nothing right now, but we think there could be something. And then you've got other ends. You've got probably settlers who are already on their way to building something up that could be viable and could support community. And then there is larger businesses. There's larger organizational units. But the thing the industrialization group have done is they've provided the bridging. They've provided the uniformity. They've provided maybe some API specification that allows you to interoperate between the islands. That sense that actually it's not about one way of doing things. It's not about trying to drive and inflict over invite culture, but it's about finding ways to bridge and support islands and their own unique ways of working and the culture that they can engender themselves, giving the empowerment to the teams and respecting that which, that which they can achieve, there is the fundamental win for us. And so that, for us, is it. Uh, two or three minutes if there are questions or comments, but otherwise, thank you for listening. And genuinely, again, Barry, John, uh, Mick, Simon, everybody, just... Thank you for everything you guys give us in these type of environments. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? Happy to take any questions. Cool. Oh, hey. How are you doing, sir? So self-identification. Yeah, like this, um, the whole idea, yeah, the whole idea of settlers, pioneers, and tablets. I don't think when we started out, we understood or appreciated the concept. I don't think we had that sense that there were almost ways in which you can contribute. And yet, actually, when I look at um, Simon Wardley's work earlier on around how he thought about commoditization, product, and genesis, they are different skill sets. They're not uniquely different, but they're about this idea of whether you are wired towards trying, 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 trying again, and actually almost enjoying the experimentation more than the result. They're differently minded people, and it's not true to say that devs are one and controls is the other. Actually, again, it's that diversity of thought. We have some incredibly innovative folk working in controls, or we have some incredibly town planning industrialization folk working in design. I think we're starting to get to a place where actually self-identification, so long as there's respect, humility, and an understanding of the whole, I think we're getting to a place where this type of thing helps people feel that they can have a part to play, irrespective of their siloed community. It's how they want to show up. I think it's beginning to have a difference. But yeah, actually, when you hear Geraldine's perspective on it, actually, if you end up with all the pioneers self-identifying and going off in one area, just drives a different sense of difference. So when you're listening to Simon's, that, that sense of, um, it happened to me actually, the, the settlers being able to come in and almost usurp some pioneers, pioneers recognizing that it's time to pass the mantle on, pioneers recognizing that actually their role is to now go on and continue exploration. They have to hand something over, they have to have the self-respect and humility to be aware that they're not the people to take it to industrialization. It gets quite hard actually to say, I'm a pioneer, but now my job's done, I'm gonna pass it on. Thank you, thank you both for, for the sharing. Um, I, could, I could tell there's some frustration in terms of the, the interactions with the, the main <laughs> islanders. Um, are you both trying to do something to let them understand what's happening or how you feel or try to, to remove those counterproductive comments out of work environment? I think um, some of the... I don't know if my mic's on. I think some of the um, examples we shared 
are just examples of what we've seen whilst we've been on our journey. One of the biggest assets and what's really helped is actually inviting people to come and work with us and understand and taking them on that journey. Um, I think to remain on the island in isolation is almost naive because I'm just delaying the inevitable. And actually bringing people on the journey has been a huge help in that. And actually, um, the more and more we share that message across all levels um, has actually really helped. And, that, and going back to your question there, you actually find that whilst you assume people are in the old world and just thinking old world, there's quite a lot of them in there that actually want change. Some of our biggest contributors to pioneer thinking have been from the people that you would perceive to just be comfortable settlers from compliance or risk functions. And actually, they're the people that say, and actually, there is a better way, and we want to contribute to that dialogue. That collaborative working has actually helped to ease some of that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. All.